What's this, Jack? Another Dragon Ball video? Well, yeah. Truth be told, I had plans to cover this game right when it was first released, but thanks to my little hiatus, we'll call it, that kind of fell through now, didn't it? That and I thought that the Budokai video would make for a nice introduction to the franchise, as well as a solid companion piece to this video. So without further ado ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at Dragon Ball Fighters. Besides, if this game has taught me anything, it's that the more Goku you have in your life, the better. Dragon Ball Fighters was shown off publicly via Microsoft's E3 2017 press conference, aka the place where all weebs go to get their anime. Developed by Arc System Works, most famous for their stylish as hell Blaze Blue series, Dragon Ball Fighters set out to take one of anime's most iconic franchises and deliver that same 3 on 3 combo centric action. The reception for this game at the time was overwhelmingly positive, even those who weren't familiar with the franchise. It even managed to land a spot at EVO, although let's be honest that might have something to do with Marvel vs Capcom Infinite's shelf life being anything but. I like Dragon Ball games, there are some gems, but a lot of these games are distractions at best. Fun distractions, but not something other than fans can truly appreciate. This though, this is just... Ah. Now, as I'm sure I've made clear during my last review, I'm not the biggest fan of tournament fighters, not counting Smash Brothers, if you even count that at all. As such, I'm going into Dragon Ball Fighters with one simple question. How accessible is Dragon Ball Fighters to those who have never picked up a fighting game? Well, before we can answer any of that, we've got a story mode to cover, which, unlike our prior game, is actually fully original. Oh, guys, you shouldn't have. No, really, you, you shouldn't have. The story is split into three campaigns, heroes, villains, and androids. At first glance, you might be thinking that this is something along the lines of Sonic Adventure. They're not so much three interconnected plots, but rather three retellings of the exact same story. The heroes and villains story feel fairly inconsequential because of this. The narrative centres on a new character, Android 21, a scientist for the Red Ribbon Army. By transmitting microwaves into the atmosphere, she's able to knock the heroes unconscious in one clean sweep. During this time, she uses the Namekian Dragon Balls to not only revive the likes of Frieza, Cell, and Kid Buu, but also conjure up a new army of clones. Android 21 sends the newly rebuilt 16 to deal with the Z Warriors, starting with Goku. Goku, however, is seemingly possessed by a spirit representing the player. Using the power of waking, you're able to help Goku regain control of his body. And just like that, you're off to gather the rest of the gang to stop 21. Sounds like your typical Dragon Ball fare, doesn't it? Android 21's the bad guy, Goku's got a stopper, punch, 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 the end. Not much to it, right? So why does it need to be over 10 hours long? This story is like trying to spread a very thin piece of butter on a slice of toast. A very big, dry slice of toast. If you've never watched the anime or read the manga, then don't bother. Just don't bother. This is pure self-indulgence through and through. To give an analogy for my Dragon Ball fans out there, it's like the Cell Saga and the Boo Saga did the fusion dance with the pacing of the Freezer Saga. The resurgence of the Red Ribbon Army, Android 21 absorbing fighters by turning them into tasty treats, if you're a fan, this really isn't anything you haven't seen before. What's weirder is that they feel the need to give narrative reasons to justify the gameplay mechanics. The sole purpose of those microwaves at the beginning is to explain why someone like Krillin, for example, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Freezer. Goku and friends need you, as in spirit you, to link with them in order for them to tap into their true strength. The implementation of the spirit just seems very self-insert fanfiction to me, and not the fun kind like in Xenoverse, more the awkward fourth wall breaking type. When you're given certain dialogue options to choose from, it can actually be fun to see how the characters react, especially Freezer. Ultimately though, I think it's a plot point that's only there to justify shit that only the most petty of Dragon Ball fans would care about. I hate to say it, but I just don't think this story has as much care and attention put into it as the rest of the game. Cell and Freezer are here, sure, but what do they do outside of their own story, which doesn't have any relevance to begin with? Android 21, while fundamentally an interesting character, you know, tied to Dr. Duro's backstory, is, let's be honest, 
only there for fan service. You might as well rename this arc Waifu Wars Attack of the Clones because oh yes, there's a lot of those. Did you like Budokai 2's Dragon World? Well, somebody on development duty certainly did because it's back and if you can believe it, it's even worse. You move across the board with three characters with the objective being to reach the boss. Along the way you can recruit other fighters as well as gain special perks to aid you in battle. Winning battle allows you to buff up your characters, essentially turning a strategy based fighting game and boiling it down to numbers. Yep, it gets very boring, that much is obvious, and this shit is at least 10 hours long, three of which being cutscenes. Like, you'll finish one board, get a brief cutscene that has nothing to do with anything, and then on to the next board. It's so dull and repetitive to the point where the cutscenes you're seeing here were recorded in post, but even that has problems. Dragon Ball Fighters is fully voice acted for both the Japanese and English voice cast. Great stuff. The issue is that you have to press the X button to move on to the next line, since the game doesn't automatically do it for you. It makes each of the cutscenes feel so disjointed, especially with their limited animations. If you're not paying attention to subtitles, you may even prematurely miss a line. For the record, you need to complete the story in order to unlock Android 21. You don't have to, you could shell out money for the fighter pass. Yeah, fuck that. Character interactions have it a bit better, like how would Freezer and Cell act in a casual conversation? How would characters like Goku, Vegeta and Freezer work together in a team setting? We even get that fated Nappa Vegeta reunion I've been waiting oh so long for. Too bad Raditz isn't here though. These characters are what make Dragon Ball Dragon Ball to me, so I'm very glad I was at least able to crack a smile once in a while. Okay, I know I've been fairly negative so far, but trust me, that's about to change. Both we have here are pretty standard. You've got your arcade, leaderboards, several options for matchmaking, basic stuff. Arcade is pretty similar to Super Smash Bros. The difficulty will be ramped up or scaled back depending on your performance. Participating in fights will reward you with any to spend on loot capsules. These contain knickknacks like alternate colour schemes and customisable goodies. I know what you're thinking, don't panic. These are bought using in-game currency only. Any doubles you get will be exchanged for premium coins which cannot be bought with real money and then you can use those premium coins to get something that you don't have. What's that? A system that encourages players to keep playing your game without screwing over their livelihoods? Well, praise be to Shenron. Training mode will have you learn the basics in no time. Of course, you've got your standard light, medium and heavy attacks, only chaining three attacks together will result in your character doing an auto combo. Even the biggest noob such as myself can pick up the controller and get the instant gratification of doing something flashy. Auto combos add their own complexity to them too, such as, for example, switching from a light to a heavy at the end of a combo in order to prolong your chain and give your character extra height. None of which I know how to do by the way. By using the L2 or the L1 button you can either call for an assist by tapping or change character by holding the button. R2 activates a super dash, great for closing the gap mid combo, but it can be fairly predictable and leave you open to an attack as I shall no doubt demonstrate to you several times in this video. Pressing R1 performs the Dragon Rush, which not only breaks your opponent's guard, but can also force them to switch character. Key Blasts can be performed by pressing the X button. They, along with regular attacks, can be deflected to give you and your opponent some extra distance without any unnecessary chip damage. By holding both of the right shoulder buttons, you can activate Sparking Mode. This is essentially your X Factor, like in Marvel vs Capcom. You regain health faster and your attacks are much more brutal. The longer you go in the fight, the more time you'll have to use it. Holding X and Square charges your key meter necessary for your supers. Don't use it though, you might as well just be a giant kick me sign. Vanish attacks can be activated by pressing triangle and circle at the cost of some of your key. Great for a surprise comeback. Finally, there's the matter of your specials. Unlike other tournament fighters I've tried to get into, DBF keeps things simple by having all specials and supers be performed by either quarter circle forward or quarter circle backwards plus an attack. 
About 95% of the roster control this way. Non-fighting game players can pull off their favourite DBZ moves without learning unnecessarily long combos. At the same time, the competitive level players can sink more time into choosing which character they like and perfecting their combo game with a unified, snappy control scheme. What I love about the combo challenges most though is that they actually give you a demonstration, so you know right away what you're aiming for. DBF at time of writing currently has 35 characters, 24 of which come in the base roster and 11 across two season passes with another 3 on the way. The base game shoots for around 30 pounds or 40 bucks provided that you're not getting it on the Switch. I'd say that's a decent size for a starting package. My only complaint is that I wish the DLC was maybe 5, 10 bucks cheaper. I have no idea how much this stuff costs to produce granted, but when Smash offers you 5 characters, stages and new music tracks, I really don't think that's much to ask. Also, I'm just gonna say it, these character trailers were clearly inspired by Smash. Holy shit, they put Goku in this game! A lot of the attachment you get to a character grows the more you fight with them. The thing is, I won't know how a character fights until I actually fight with them and in a game like Ultra Street Fighter 4 that can be both daunting and time consuming since there's so many to choose from. Dragon Ball Fighters doesn't have that same issue for me though because it's Dragon Ball. As a fan not only do I have an emotional attachment to these characters right out of the gate but I also have a vague idea of how they fight too. This combined significantly shortens the time picking my fighter and more time learning the ins and outs. If you're not a Dragon Ball fan though, my advice would be to pick up Goku, the yellow one that is, because my god are there a lot of Gokus in this game. In fact, as we speak, they've probably just added another one. He's essentially the Ryu in a game that's already pretty simple to get into. He's got decent damage output, his specials are easy to chain together, and he has pretty good utility. Out of all the fighters I tried for this video, I can conclude that Super Saiyan Goku, Videl and Vegito were my favourites. Vegito especially, my lord, in capable hands, this guy can juggle like there's no tomorrow, he saved my ass on more than one occasion. You know what though, despite how good the tutorial is in this game, I feel like the best way to learn is just to go online. Don't get me wrong, you'll get your ass kicked. I got completely fucking yarmshed the first time I decided to go online. Anime Glass Joe, they call me. However, there's little things you'll pick up on that you just won't get when playing with a computer. Maybe you'll get a new idea for a combo, or maybe understand how to read players better. There are certain things that I just don't think a basic tutorial can teach you in a fighting game, and now that I've actually played one, I understand that better now. I've held this off long enough. Look at this game. Just... Look at it. The sound effects are lifted straight out of the show, adding extra impact and immersion. And as for these supers, all of these are animated so beautifully and are the most hype-inducing way to finish a combo. My favourites being Kaioken Blue, Kaioken Blue and Kaioken Blue, with an honourable mention going to Kaioken Blue. Much like Budokai 3, depending on the attack, players can potentially transition between stages, giving the battles a sense of scope. The only thing I don't like is how limited the selection here is. It's not a huge deal, but other games in the franchise definitely offered more in this department. Adding the cherry on top is that you can recreate some of the series' most iconic scenes depending on your character and stage selection. This is just pure sugar for my inner Dragon Ball fan and I love it! It is absolutely emblematic of the passion that Arxis had when making this project. Story mode aside, there is a lot of love and care put into every crevice of this game. I loved Dragon Ball Fighters, and I deeply regret dropping it so quickly after launch. If you've always wanted to get into a fighting game but found them a bit too technical, provided that you don't mind the anime exterior, go for it. Just, just, just go for it. You don't even need to be a Dragon Ball fan. It's that fun. As for Dragon Ball fans, well this one's a no-brainer, you need to get it. This is one of the most uncynical experiences I've had with a game ever. It makes me proud to be a Dragon Ball fan. And I hope you're reborn as someone good this time. Goku! Win! Alright! I'm gonna train harder and get stronger! Thank <laughs> you.